Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be talking all about how to budget and save money. I get asked rather frequently how I've managed to afford so many different designer purchases. If you were a long time subscriber of mine then you will know that I have a little bit of a soft spot for designer shoes and designer handbags. And while I don't buy them all the time, I do definitely set money aside to save for them because they're one of my kind of guilty pleasures. So today I'm going to be sharing all of the different tips and tricks that I have learned over the years to make sure that I am using my money in a really responsible way, making sure that I cover off all of my bills first while still saving at the same time. There's six simple steps that I've taken to really manage my budget and keep all my finances in check. And before I jump into the video, I just want to highlight that these are all things that I have found have worked from my own personal experience. I'm not a financial expert, I'm not a financial advisor, and I will link in the description box below a couple of YouTube channels that are run by people who work in the finance industry who have some really excellent advice and are really worth subscribing to and going and watching their videos. I think it's also so worth noting that everybody's financial situation is different so you might have different priorities than I have but hopefully these tips will be a lot more general and you can apply them to your own budget if you're needing a little bit of help or a little bit of inspiration to get you going. The first thing you want to do is identify all of your expenses. These are the things that you're paying for daily, weekly, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, basically any single time you've got an expense that you need to pay for that is part of your living costs, note it down and note down the frequency that you're paying that amount or if it's something that tends to vary month by month such as your electricity bill, maybe round up just to be on the more cautious side of the scale. So your list of expenses might look a little something like this, it might have your rent, might have electricity, transport costs, food, your phone bill, car registration, health insurance, there might be some other things as well that are unique to you, but those are just some of the more general expenses that I would expect most of you would probably have. I find it really helpful to put this all into a spreadsheet and then you can break it down by weekly, fortnightly or monthly costs and it makes it a lot more manageable to go, okay, this is how much money I need to set aside each week, each fortnight or each month to pay for all of my bills. The second step is to pay your bills first. Each time that you get paid, whether you get paid weekly, fortnightly or monthly, make sure that you are allocating money towards your bills before you spend money on anything else. For me, I personally get paid monthly, which is quite common in Australia and I know it's common in other places. In New Zealand, I got paid fortnightly, which was a lot easier to manage. You have to be really careful with your budget when you're only being paid monthly. And I set aside the money for all of my expenses first. I put it into a separate account so that I know that I'm not going to touch it for anything other than what it is for. I think you probably heard this before, but it's really important to make sure that you don't default on your payments as this can affect your credit later down the line, especially if you're trying to get a loan, whether it's a small loan to maybe buy a car or if it's a mortgage to purchase your first house. Step number three is to have a plan for your money. So what I highly recommend doing is creating a budget that coincides with when you get paid so you know exactly what you're going to be doing with the money from that paycheck. So for example, just say that you got paid $2,000 a month. If your weekly rent is $150 a week, you'd be looking at spending $7,800 a year on your rent or $650 a month. So that means that for that month, you're setting aside $650 for rent. Let's say that you spend $450 a month on groceries, $50 on your phone bill, $50 on electricity, $150 on transport, and a further $100 on health insurance. You know that you've spent $1,400 out of your $2,000 for that month on your living expenses. You've got $600 left over on that month and so you've got to decide how you're going to allocate that. How much money you want to put into your savings each month, how much money you want to allocate towards entertainment, eating out, 
any other miscellaneous expenses, maybe travel, and also shopping if you're interested in fashion or you like buying yourself the odd new thing. In the description box below, I'm going to drop a link to an Excel document that I've created with a mock budget that you can use as a template for building your own weekly, monthly, fortnightly budget and I'll also drop some links to some really helpful budgeting apps that you can use on your phone as well. I've definitely used them a lot in the past and I found them really useful when it comes to identifying where I'm spending too much and where I can cut back. Step number four is to try and save at least 10% of your income. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I know that everybody's in a different financial situation and this might not be possible for all of you. However, I highly recommend saving as much as possible of your income every single paycheck. So using that example from before, if you were to save 10% of $2,000, that's $200 per month that you'd be putting aside into a savings account to go towards whatever it is that you're currently saving for, whether that's a new handbag or a new car or even your first home or a really amazing holiday overseas. I think it's really exciting to set goals and you can see that money accumulate over time, which in itself is really rewarding. Step number five is to avoid living on credit. I've been there, I had a credit card, I don't have one anymore because personally I found it just encouraged me to spend more money that I didn't have. It's not your money, it belongs to the bank and you have to pay it back plus interest if you're not paying it off in full every single month. That's how they get you and personally I think it's best to avoid them if you can. If you do have a credit card but you're unable to pay it off in full every single month, I highly recommend making sure that you're paying more than the recommended minimum amount just because this will really reduce the amount of interest that you pay off in the long run. There are so many great resources online in addition to really helpful YouTube videos all about credit cards and paying them off so you can reduce the amount of interest that you're paying to the bank. So I will link some of my favorite ones down below in case you're in that situation and you want to pay off that credit card debt. My final tip would be to have a safety net. Generally, I feel like $500 at least is a really good place to start, but again, this depends on your financial situation and the types of unexpected expenses that might crop up for you. For example, you might go to the dentist for your regular checkup and find out that you need a root canal, which is quite a costly expense. So you want to make sure that you've got that money set aside for it so that when those things do happen, you're not caught out. So those are my six tips on how to budget and save money. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. As you know, if you're a long time subscriber of mine, I really love fashion, but I really don't think that it's worth investing in things at the detriment of your own personal finances. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you'd like to see more from me, please do click the subscribe button down below. I'll see you guys next week with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.